Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Pete. It is Monday morning, March 9th, 2020. Probably going to be a little bit of a shorter version of Stocks for Breakfast today and tomorrow because I'm actually traveling. You can see the hotel in the background. Um, put a smile on my face there for a second, but things have gotten worse over the weekend, and we're going to jump right into the charts. Again, I, I just can't stress this enough. If you are a part-time trader who is seeking to take advantage of the volatility that's in the market right now, I strongly recommend that you kind of step aside and wait for a little bit more normal conditions. Uh, I'm going to point something out right now that stock traders actually wouldn't know that much about or really have not experienced. And we always, we've been starting out with the futures market to kind of get a gauge uh, what the levels might be if we're up or down overnight. The, the futures markets actually went limit down yesterday, which is something that's not normal for the stock market. And essentially what limit down means is that it reached a number where it, it rose or fell to a certain degree fast enough. And I'm not even sure if fast enough is, is uh, the right word, but it rose a, a certain amount where they shut the futures markets down. And when, it, when a futures goes limit up or limit down, that's the actual terminology, that it basically means it's stopped trading and you can't get in or out of positions. It's literally stuck there. Now, the interesting thing, for those of you that don't know, I actually used to, I began trading in commodities way back in 1994. And uh, there was a coffee uh, surge, I think it was 95, if I'm not mistaken. And it just kept going limit up. And what limit it up does or limit down or limit move in the futures markets, just so you understand the severity of it, when it goes limit up or limit down, it shuts down for the day. So there were periods of time where it was going limit up in coffee for days in a row and you couldn't do anything. You couldn't, you couldn't sell, you couldn't buy, you couldn't do nothing. So that doesn't happen here. We're obviously going to open up in the stock market, but I want you to have an, uh, a, 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 I got to use the right word. I want you to understand the severity of a market going limit up or limit down. So as I said, if you're not a full-time trader right now and, you, and you're, you have some other full-time job and somebody's managing your portfolio, but you're watching these videos to become a better trader, to really learn what to do, first of all, congratulations that you're taking, you're taking your time out to improve yourself. That is a monster part of being successful at anything. How you spend your spare time will absolutely dictate how you spend your future. And the fact that you're taking the time to watch these videos, that's great. You're on the right path. However, this is a day traders market right now where only professional day traders should be getting involved from, from, a, from a skill position, from a time position, meaning how much time have you had in front of the machine, how much uh, experience do you have, and how much time do you have during the day. And the reason I keep saying this, and I'm bringing this up, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to sound conservative, but what I am trying to sound is experienced. And I've experienced markets like this. I've traded through the internet boom. I've traded through the financial crisis. There's been a bunch of stuff where stocks are just moving violently. And if you're trying to trade it part-time while you're doing another job full-time, you, you're going to have a very tough, bad experience because you could literally see something. I'll give you, here's, the best, here's easily the best way to explain it. Probably before the stock market crash and the coronavirus right now, let's, let's just use the SPY ETF. As an example, the SPY, the average true range in those stocks or even average moves are probably around $1.50, maybe $2. It's probably tripled that right now. So not only has the risk amount per trade expanded dramatically, but they are moving so fast right now that you could literally put a trade on, think that you're in a good position, go to lunch, come back and not be watching it, believing that you have the good trade on and we could be reversing dramatically in the other direction. So even though we're not getting into a ton of trades today, I want, I want to, I really want to impart to you the wisdom that I've had and how I've lost a lot of money early in my career, not understanding certain situations that you need to pull back away from because it's just not worth the fight if you're at another job full time. And, and I can't stress this enough. The market's going to get back to normal eventually. Smart people will eventually figure out what's going on with the coronavirus and, and, take care of it and the market will get back to normal price movement. But that doesn't mean that you need to trade now in and out, in and out, in and out. If you're not doing it full time, if you are doing it full time, my gosh, do you have an environment right now that is just tailor made for being in front of your screen, especially if you have a good commission structure, which quite honestly, most people do today. Yeah, you 
to trade for zero at some of the, at some of these larger brokerage firms right now. Um, if you are trading full time, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to touch on a couple of headlines, and then I'm going to I want to keep going back to the, the the trading game plan that I think that if you are at a machine and you have relative experience, don't quite have your uh, full strategy really fleshed out. I'm, ju I'm just going to show you what I'm watching during the day. We've gotten some super testimonials uh, of people that have been using what I'm about to show you over the last week or so. Um, extremely happy because of the simplicity of it um, and uh, the ease of being able to spot the situation. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to the screen. We're going to, we're going to take a look at a couple of um, charts, uh, a couple of news stories, and then I'm going to go to the game plan and then we'll call it a day. So let's actually uh, let's share the screen. Hopefully I can do this correctly. Okay. So you can see here, the futures actually went down and they stopped printing. So you can look at the chart and you're like, oh my gosh, what happened? They actually, that's what it means when a stock or uh, not a stock, when a futures market goes limit down a, a future or a future or commodity, it literally just stops and you can't trade in or out of it. So we're waiting for them to reopen. Got some other news here. The Fed, the Fed likelihood of slashing rates to zero. Uh, again, nobody wants this to be happening right now. However, um, I just can't stress it enough. This is an amazing situation if you're an active day trader. That, that's the point that I want to make, active day trading. Going to keep moving along into some of the news. And where was the story? This is the big one right here. Dow futures plunge, global sell-off deepens. Oil prices crash. Not only did oil prices crash, but I'm going to go out to the daily chart. Bitcoin sold off 10% yesterday. 10%. So let's actually go to uh, BTC USD. A 10% move overnight in Bitcoin is just an absolutely monster move. Um, this is exactly why, why I'm trying to stress to everybody. You don't need to be involved in every single day, every single day in the market. You, what you need to do, and here, here's the way I basically explain it. You need to pick the fights that you have a good chance of winning. And that includes the type of market that you choose to trade. Now, if you think about it, right in the beginning, we all we choose to trade um, every day, or we want to choose to trade every day. And then you you look for opportunities that match the strategy that you have, your edge. And again, as I talked about in a previous video, it, the best compliment that anybody could give me is, the, is is they'll tell me I'm trading your strategy, and I couldn't find anything to do today. That's amazing because that means that they're really, they're looking for something specific as opposed to just trying to find something. So this market right now, you can definitely find something on these shorter time frames. and I'm going to uh, map this out again. I'm gonna take that off the screen so it's easier to see again. We'll be able to see it up in the top corner here. So obviously I'm talking about Roku right now. So the strategy that is working like gangbusters right now is we're just looking first at the opening price. And again, this is a 15 minute chart of Roku. And that is our first line in the sand to determine if we wanna be a buyer or a seller. In, mark, in, um, in market terms, that means you wanna be long or short. So long means you're a buyer, short means that you're a seller. So if, if we're trading below the opening price, that means that you want to be short in this scenario. We also said that you can use one extra filter on an intraday basis is use your hourly chart. So you can see there are 60 minute charts right now to determine if you wanna be long or short that hour. So the first signal is we wanna be above or below the opening price because that's today's tape reading barometer. Remember everything that we're doing is we wanna move you from chart reader to tape reader. The first part of tape reading is having a price. And again, normally that price is your entry price, but we're trying to determine that before we put on a trade. So we have the hourly chart combined with the opening price, and that will determine if it's the right trade to make right now. So what I mean by that is we're below the opening price. That means we want to be short. Then we look at the hourly candle needs to be in sync with the opening price. So in this case here, it's red, red, red. So these three hourly candles, we would go back down to the lower time frames, either the 15 minute or the five minute chart and look for entry prices. So we happen to have had 
uh, bearish U-turn and a swing high here on both the 15 and on the five in Roku. Here's the 15 minute one. Then if we go back out to the hourly chart, this hour was not red, so we wouldn't look for entry prices. This hour turns red again, so now we're looking for short sales again. And then the last two hours of the day, we spike and we don't even look for an entry price. So you can kind of see how it actually works for those of you that are trading, let's say ETFs, the, um, the SPY was actually a different story. So let's, this is actually a good example here. The SPY was down here, which was opposite of the Roku trade. And that's pretty interesting, right? So all of a sudden now it's a different image where the SPY was actually above the opening price the entire day and it gapped down and you had a much different decision. And we actually had a couple of people send over some nice messages about being long uh, here once we got back above the opening price. Because uh, if you look on the 60 minute chart again, we actually went well bid here, which is higher highs, higher lows, and we got above the opening price. You had very short term confirmation there, but if you drop down to the five minute chart, you can see that you actually closed above the opening price here. You are now well bid on the 60 minute chart uh, and got a really nice push into the close. And this is kind of what I'm talking about, how much prices have expanded. 293 to 298.50 in a very short period of time. Um, those are some wild moves, but absolutely perfect moves for uh, for day traders. So hopefully what I just explained to you gives you a really clear intraday scenario. But I, And I'll touch on this in a little bit later video, maybe later in the week when I, when I actually get home and in front of my computer again. Um, you could use the same tape reading principles that I'm showing you on intraday charts. And, and it's actually easier to show you on intraday charts because there's so much more movement and you could fluctuate back and forth. You, could, you can go from higher time frame to lower time frame and that kind of stuff. You could do the same thing on higher time frames. You could use quarterly, monthly, weekly, and daily to determine whether or not you want to be long or short. So the quarterly chart, chart would need to be red or green above the opening price for that month that just started, whether or not it's well offered or well bid. And then you would work your way down the lower time frames to time your entries and then go back to the higher time frames to uh to hold those winners longer that's one of the biggest questions is how do i know how, how to hold my winners because once you start to get the tape reading principles that i'm teaching to you it's the biggest problem you're going to have and i and i promise you this is going to be a problem because a lot of my students if not most of my students once once you come out of the program or, or once you really grasp these principles uh it's it's the most common thing is i'm making fewer bad trades which is a great sign I'm making more good trades, which means that you're in more winning trades. And that ultimately becomes, how do I hold my winners longer? And that's the, kind of like that, that last secret part that most people don't talk about. Because you go to the higher time frames to determine if you want to be long or short. Then you drop down to the lower time frames to fine tune your entries. And people stop there. Great traders go back to the higher time frame and say, well, the higher time frame is still long. There's no reason for me to get out. So you, you, you don't get uh, flummoxed. You don't get... You don't watch the shorter time frames go up and down and scare you out of good trades because you go back up to the higher time frames uh, to manage those winners. So I'm Pete Renzulli. Thanks so much for um, watching today's episode of Stocks and Breakfast. It is March 9th, 2020. If you found it helpful, click down and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. And you also get updates. And uh, again, please heed my uh, wisdom. And I say wisdom not because I'm smarter than you, just because I've been trading for a long time. If you're not trading full time and you can't be in front of a machine all day, um, I really don't recommend trying to trade in and out of positions while you have another full-time job. Be smart. There's going to be plenty of opportunity uh, for you to make money. So have a great day, and I will speak to you soon.